we're waiting for it to <clears throat> get ready to go out on Facebook Live here. And I think there we are, I hope. I hope we're coming out here on uh, Facebook. Let's see here. <clears throat> there we are. Okay, good. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is a little different kind of thing that we do here in order to uh, get ourselves uh, <clears throat> going. Uh, we're uh, going out over Facebook, and we will be up there for about Oh, I don't know, five minutes, and if nobody calls, then we won't do uh, um, um, a discussion here. Okay? All right? Okay. Let me see here. Let me put these on my... Uh... <clears throat> Boy, I just had a coughing fit because something went down the wrong way, but now I'm okay. And uh, I just, uh, what I wanted to do is just check in with you on, a, uh, <clears throat> on an afternoon here. Let me uh, take, <coughs> oh boy, I just, I'm, I'm sorry, just, uh, mm. Mm. okay, here's Brian Neary, uh, we'll admit him to the room, hello Brian, hold on a second, there we go, there comes Brian, hey Brian, how are you? <coughs> hold on one second. Okay, yeah, there we got your audio. Yes. Hello. I, just before I started to do this, I got into a coughing fit. Ah. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I, I had a, a coconut chocolate or something, and uh, it went down the wrong way. <clears throat> Is that from Costco? One of those coconut chocolate thingies? No, no, no. This was, uh, this was uh, uh, what's the company that makes, uh, it's, it's sugar-free. Oh, yeah. You guys... I'm wearing the wrong shirt for this. Look at this. I'm moraying. <laughs> you see this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys get those choc those sugar-free chocolates you and Marjorie like, right? Yeah, well, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the, the the company, and I, I get them. Oh no, she gets like the Hershey's sugar free. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But mine are these uh, uh, I, uh, I can't remember the name of the company. <clears throat> Saved my life, so I don't know. Anyway, I just thought I would do this for the hell of it and see if uh, if anybody calls us and you somehow were available, right? Yeah, uh, this week I'm on my normal schedule, like six to noon, and uh, but then next week I'm on another project. So some big buildings we're doing right now. So wow, it's exciting. So yeah, it's just a lot of work. Well, uh, boy, this is. Let me hold on a second. I got to do something here. <laughs> uh, let me go get a shirt to put on that will keep this thing from moraying as much. <clears throat> I should have I should have known the shirt would do that. It, it doesn't do it all the time, but here if I put this on, <clears throat> then the moraying won't be as bad. I no, I guess it's still bad. I don't know. Here we are, anyway. So <laughs> we're just waiting for people to call, and just this isn't like an official show or anything. I, uh, uh, huh? It, it's interesting though. The Zoom, you've been getting a lot of different people. That's pretty cool. With Zoom, yeah, yeah, got a lot of new people. Zoom seems to be <clears throat> easy enough for people to use. Boy, I. <coughs> Hear that? Not coronavirus. No, it's not. No. <laughs> oh, hell, this is too warm. I can't. <laughs> just like Boddicker, just take it off. <laughs> Wait a minute. Stay there. Talk to the people. I'm going to okay. go out. I'm going to change my shirt quickly. Okay, that's fine. I'll entertain everybody. <clears throat> make sure there's nobody in the waiting room. Is there anybody in the waiting room? Uh, no. Not no, okay, that's fine. <laughs> turn the waiting room off so you might have some people join you. Hold on. So okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, hmm. This is why I don't want my own show. 
<sighs> Just waiting. People, get on Zoom. Give us a buzz. Chit chat for a little bit. It's fun doing the Mondays. I begin off at noon, so get home right in time. And it's like a long weekend without Alex. That's good to have a little one on Monday. So, yep. So I was born in Redwood City and grew up there, up in the hills. <laughs> I hope he's coming back. <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh, there we go. <clears throat> we even got shorts on today, though. We got good. eight people watching us or something now. Wow, eight people. What do you want to know? Ask me a question. Oh, I don't know how we do that, but. Uh, Alex, you look so uh, nice. And boring. Um, Moraine is something I should know from, you never wear that kind of shirt on TV. You look so nice during the day though. Nice shorts and everything, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I went out for a walk today. Ah, oh, that's good. You know what I've been having? I've been dizzy. Yeah. Like really lightheaded, dizzy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just last hour, I cleaned my ears out with some hydrogen peroxide. I'm not as dizzy. Wow. wow. Might have been plugged ears. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you I remember you said you're trying to get off some of the stuff you've been taking to sleep and stuff like that. Have you been successful right. with that? Yeah, oh yeah. I've oh, taken really? about a week and a half, two weeks, something like that. Oh really? Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So uh in case people don't know, Brian uh works at a company that makes test kits, right? Is it test kits? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, de test kits. So we started in, uh, basically we started in 2001. We started just before that, 1996. Yeah. But we started in 2001 after the congressman had the uh, letters in the mail with the anthrax after 9-11. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were building some stuff for biotech at that time, uh, mm -hmm. so BioThreat. And then we hooked up with Northrop Grumman. And so in their system where all the mail goes through, uh, we take air samples every half hour, and we still do that. We still have a contract with the government for that. The governor today, now I don't know if you know about this, but Cuomo did a press conference today mm -hmm. uh, urging the president to sign an executive order making everyone wear a mask. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, but of course the president won't do that. Yeah, he won't even wear them. In fact, you know, these governors were so stupid and are continuing to be so stupid. If you were a governor and you wanted to know how to solve your sudden spike, right? Who would you go to? Like anything, you go to your boss. Well, no, but wait a minute. I'm talking about you're a governor of a state and your uh -huh. your state has gone sky high. It's just uh -huh. jumping like crazy. Uh -huh. Who would you go to for advice? Oh, for advice? Oh, yeah, for their, their health group, right? Yeah, I'd say you'd go to Cuomo, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, you're saying of all the governors, yes. Governor uh, Cuomo has done it the right way. Governors. Cuomo yep. beat the virus. Exactly. He hit it on the head and kept hitting it on the head and kept hitting it on the head, and finally he drove it down. Yesterday we went up in deaths. Mm -hmm. We went from five deaths to eight deaths. You know, what about uh, the beds? How about the bed? oh, we um, amount of hospitalizations was eight hundred and fifty or something, the lowest it's been in all of New York in in the whole oh. coronavirus thing. Uh, it, we don't have, we're really not dealing with deaths quite as much anymore. You know, I mean, five deaths. Come on, there are three hundred yeah. hospitals in this state. Yeah, so how many nursing homes? Yeah, I think Cuomo, like I told you before, even people in California, my friends, when we chit chat and we always talk about, oh, did you see Cuomo today? You know, when we were talking these last weeks, because Cuomo was on top of everything and he was being the first one to say, wear a mask. You know, just when you see people in the public, make sure you have your mask on and those real common he, sense things. He also said something else that was important. And that is, this isn't a political issue. Right. You know, it is not a political issue. The, 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 the coronavirus doesn't have politics. It doesn't say you're a Democrat. I'm going to come get you. Right. You know. And now, and now we're and finding yet, out that age too. Yet these parties are making it political. Yep. 
And he said, I'm not going to be political. And he made, gave the president two pieces of advice. First, tell the truth. Mm, yep. Level with the American public. Tell them the truth of what's going on. And then sign an executive order requiring everyone in the country when they're outdoors to wear a mask. And yeah. Trump was pushing that at the very beginning. Remember, he kept saying, oh, wear a scarf. Just wear something over your face. Did he say that? He used to say that at the very beginning. Well, it got to a point, that. it supposedly, and the reason he doesn't like masks is he thinks people who wear them are using it as an affront to him. Mm. Like it's all about him. You know, yeah, yeah. oh, here comes Mark Thorner. Oh, oh, I got to admit people. I see. I didn't take that off. Hold on a second. Let me get rid, rid of the waiting room. Hello, Mark. How are you doing down in infected Florida? Oh, stay away. <laughs> huh? What, 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 what more can I tell you? The yeah. fact that we all know that my governor is an asshole. <laughs> um, I kind of wish that uh, Cuomo was our governor. Yeah. Uh, you know... But uh, do I, you know, do I want to be up in New York right now? Not on your fucking life. Why? Because right now I have space down here and the fools in this town. Yeah. I can stay far away from them as possible. Okay. So. Yeah. But, but I'd say the safest state to be in is New York. Yeah, I, I will agree. I mean, and what we're worrying about is you guys coming up from Florida and bringing uh, it back to us. No, I ain't coming. Like, like I said, uh, I was on furlough. I'm coming off furlough next Monday. Yeah. So, you know, as much as I enjoyed the time off and I was very productive during <laughs> it, uh, I want to go back to work, you know. Yeah, right, right. Now, how, how old are you now, Mark? You're in your 60s, right? I just turned 60 last Wednesday, Alex. 60. So uh, you're kind of in the in the group that... <laughs> well, look at me. I'm 80 for crap <laughs> out loud. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Every day of it. What? I, I know, but it's like, oh, God, you know. I'm like, yeah, I turned 60, so... But don't you hate watching all these kids on TV saying, well, I'm not doing anything about it. I don't think I'm going to get it. If I get it, I'm only, I'm only 22. It's not going to hurt me. And they don't realize that they could kill Mark Thorner. Uh, until I kill him first, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 my God, I, you know, without risking my God, now I'm going to get into, oh my God, uh, Alex, I'm like, <laughs> it, it, it's the kind of thing it's like what is this the biggest darwin award winning you know yeah. it's like let's see who's gonna die for yeah. doing something really stupid and that's what's gonna happen yep you know yep. And, and i remember my god i remember my college statistics and this is not gonna end well <laughs> yeah i'm sorry math and science you know no. You know what I hate most about this is the absolute disdain for science that the administration seems to have. And the other day, I hate Pence. I just hate him. I was watching him on uh, Face the Nation. And he said, well, look, you know, we, uh, we, meaning we being the Trump we, have have completely uh, killed the virus in in New York. Didn't mention Cuomo. Didn't mention the people of New York and the, and the and the sacrifices we made to get us to this point. He just pointed that out as one of the success stories of the Trump administration. Can you believe that? Instead of just saying, "I got to hand it," you know, he's not my political guy. Hi, Steve. Yeah. He's not my political guy. But you got to hand it to Mario Cuomo. He managed to beat this back, you know, and the people of the state of New York. Instead, he had the Trump administration taking credit for it. Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> I think, you know, his father, <laughs> so, his father is so ingrained in us. <laughs> yes. You know. Um, 
But Mario Cuomo's been incredible. He's just been incredible. And we w- just wish we had this kind of leadership. Steve, where are you again? Downtown, uh, Union Square area. Union Square area. Oh, yeah, you're the guy that weathered the storm and got on a subway the last time. We Once. Took. Haven't done it since. But. Haven't done it since. I hear they're pretty clean. I hear they're, you know, they're, they're, they're not dangerous. Eh, there were people on without masks and, you know. Oh, really? Well, they shouldn't be. I know. We yeah. should have transit cops down there saying, it, get off the goddamn train. I, you I, get I didn't mask. see a single cop of any variety on either side of the train. There should be a cop. Well, this is, this is, this is, what's his name's fault? Uh, the Blasio. Blasio. Because there should be a cop at every station. And if somebody's coming down into the station, not wearing a mask, you go, <clears throat> nope, you're not allowed here. Yep. Yeah, especially yeah. at the beginning to get the behavior, you know? Yeah, and then they'll, you know, and by the way, you have no excuse because you can go to the counter at the subway, they'll give you a little thing of, uh, of uh, the, what do you call it? hand wash, hand sanitizer, and they'll give you a mask. So reason why you shouldn't be wearing a mask in the subway. Yeah. Alex, one of my oldest friends, childhood friend, works for the Transit Authority, and he was supposed to retire. Mm-hmm. They won't let him retire because... They can't find people who want to work for the transit authority. And he gave them an ultimatum. He said, my wife and I are moving. I am done with you people in July. I don't give a damn. Yeah. And he, and he has over 30 years with the TA, with the transit authority. And yeah. it's like, it, the fact that they wouldn't let him retire and it's like, and he's going to retire with one hell of a pension. I'm telling you, but it's like, he, he's like, sorry, come July, I'm, we're gone. You know, I'm out of here. Yeah, That's history. Yeah, they, and they're leaving New York. I mean, it's a like, long time. I often wanted to get a place in the country. Now I'm sorry I never did. Yeah, you know, be nice to be up there. I think part of the I'm I'm going through all kinds of little problems like being lightheaded, and uh, <clears throat> um, I'm my. Uh, my breathing's a little uh, labored at times and so on. And I think all of it is being stuck in this apartment for four months. All of it is catching up with me. What I thought wasn't going to catch up with me caught up with me. And then I think about going out and I go, where can I go? There's no place to go. I, I, if I can't get on a subway, I can't go downtown um, to go get some ravioli at Italy, you know. I'm not taking an Uber or a, or a Lyft. Because they're like gouging like crazy right now. Yeah, no, that's the thing. You know, where do you know you want to get out every day and you go out and it's hot and humid and there's no place to go. You know something? I need to say something. Wear a mask. I feel like I'm gonna faint. It's like suffocating. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh somebody once said it, well, it's kinda like when you had were told you had to wear a condom. And I went. No, because a condom never suffocated me. It just <laughs> <laughs> suffocated the part. You know. Yeah, no, if you know, you're not breathing through your dick, right? Yeah, so. no, but it is hard to breathe. <laughs> it is hard to breathe through those masks. And somebody should invent a newer mask that makes it easier for you to breathe and is more breathable. Yeah, it's not fun. And you know, I used to go to the pool and swim every morning at the Y and you know, that's not gonna happen this summer. I mean, so I find myself when I'm walking down the street and there's not many buddy really ahead of me and not anybody in back of me. I take the mask down for a little bit so I can just breathe. Yeah. And then when they, they're coming my way, up goes the mask. Yes. But I was surprised at how many people today weren't wearing masks. And I got to say something, and please don't, folks, don't think I'm being racist when I say this. I live in a basically heavily black populated neighborhood, okay? So the people I'm going to see on the street are black as opposed to a large amount of white people, okay? That being said, black people ain't wearing the masks, you know, I find more black people who are just not wearing the mask. And I'm thinking to myself, then don't wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt, okay? Because obviously black lives don't matter because the life especially that you're going to be putting in danger is a relative or a brother or a sister or whatever. If black lives matter, it should matter also in an action like this. Am I right or wrong? 
right? Yeah. Now, I'm, you're downtown where there are a lot more white people. Yeah, it's young people not wearing masks. You know, these um, yeah. main blocks in Murray Hill that are full of bars. It's just, you know, all these bros out partying on the street. And every bar is out on the street, packed with people. You know, you know what, you know what, what uh, Cuomo said today was, is he's yeah. going to phase three on next Monday. But if these people don't clean up their act about being out there without masks, we're yeah. not going to phase three. Yeah, it's in the, the village, West Village, East Village, Murray Hill. It's just these, it's like a block party. They say the Upper West Side is also another problem area. Yeah, that, I think I read that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, here's how I look at it when I see somebody, because I'm in the, I'm 80, man. You're, you're killing me if you do this. Okay. Uh, or you're, you're taking the chance of killing me. I think we have better ways of handling people now. We're not putting as many on ventilators. We have them lying face down. Uh, there are, the you know the uh, antibody thing and a couple of other uh, things that we're doing now. I think that's also why the the death rate is going down. But you know when you do that, you're you're taking a chance on killing me, and I don't like that. You know, have a little more decency respect. towards your fellow man. You know, it's just basic respect. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we don't have that respect with a lot of people, nope. you know, uh, kids, you, you know, they, they figure they're going to live forever. I did, you know, now I'm beginning to question that wisdom. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, uh, and I understand the folly of youth, but I also, if I were young, raised the way I was raised, I would wear a mask because I would know what the alternative was of me not wearing a mask. You yeah. know, I'm not stupid. Yep. Well, it's like you said, going back to see relatives or seeing your parents, even, you know, the kids, mm -hmm. you know. Well, we had a kid who was down in Florida who came up to Westchester uh, because it, it was his graduation up here. And he had been down in Florida, came back here, and now Westchester has a hot spot. Okay. All because he didn't think twice about it. You know, it only takes one person to infect an entire fucking community. I mean, ask Brian, he's in the business of, of, of testing. And Newsom started closing some of the county bars. So some yeah, seven a, county you know, he's closing the bars. Again. I got to tell you, everybody said, Oh, he did a great job. He nipped it in the butt early. Well, no, he didn't nip it in the butt early. Cause look at what's happening now. Okay. Right. I agree. So Gavin Newsom, I think, is a little late to the party. He should have, he, what happened here in New York is Cuomo did the most unpopular thing a governor could do. He closed down every fucking business, you know, and people go, how are we going to live? How are we going to make money? Lots of people put out of work. Go figure that with that action, he became one of the most popular governors in the United States. California got complacent. They were, you know, they were, oh, it's such a big state and we we're so low on everything. And they start easing up stuff too quickly. And now we're in this, this situation. You got a problem with Trump. I mean, all he cares about is, can I get reelected? Can I get reelected? What can right. I do something? You know what you can do to get reelected? Care about this virus. Too late. Yeah. And he's had so many chances to do it, man. That's like just watching a train wreck. Every time he comes up there, you think, man, if he just talks about this, show some empathy, he could change his whole direction. And this has been for months. And then he just crashes and burns every time. Well, on his medical oh. record, it shows that he had an empathy bypass when he was a child. Yeah. So, you know. He's a fucking idiot. I mean, you I think if he, he thinks if you don't test people, then you don't have, then we don't have cases. Now you live in Florida, Mark, which is a pretty conservative area, right? Well, the part, the part that I live in more so. More so. How are they feeling about Trump through all this? And they also probably are an older group too. Love them. A lot. Well, he should just shut his mouth and just run the country at this point, because even, even a lot of my friends who are the most diehard are realizing, shut your goddamn mouth. You know, and and do something uh, about this. Yeah, and you know, oh my God, it's like, okay, what is it going to take to re for you guys to realize what I've been warning you all this time? Yeah, 
you know, and I wanted to give the guy a chance. He was not my favorite person in, you know, out of all the New York personalities when I, since I was a New Yorker, he was like on that bottom five. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I saw this guy getting more and more popular, it's like, what the fuck is going on here? You know? Well, I have Republican friends, Phil being one of them, who says, uh, oh, you just uh, you just want him to fail. No, I don't. I didn't want him to fail the day he got elected. I wanted him to surprise me and, and do right and do good and have me say, hey, I guess I was wrong. I guess the guy's better than I thought he was. I'm not wishing for failure. His failure is my failure. Exactly. It's, it's yeah, exactly. But it's funny when he came out in the late eighties, nineties with Art of the Deal. Yeah, I couldn't even get through ten pages. <laughs> I, I I I I just you know I gave it back to the person who lent it to me, and I said I can't read this. Oh, listen, I got news for you. You couldn't get through ten pages of it. Neither could he. Right, he didn't have, any, he had nothing to do with it. Tony <laughs> Schwartz wrote the whole book. Right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. I hope he. I hope he got a good payday for it. No, he's a big, he's a big anti-Trump guy now. He's, he's he appears all the time on you know MSNBC and shit. You know. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder how Mark Burnett feels these days. He's got to have the tapes. You know? No, but he he uh, uh, he's got to f- feel guilty for this because I mean he established Donald Trump. Donald Trump had no. Uh, he, you know he was only a major personality through the publicity that he did it was the TV show that got him known nationally. And, and they portrayed him as being this deal maker and this big businessman, although he was a terrible businessman, but they didn't care. It's a TV show. It's fiction, you know? And so what America bought and paid for was fiction. Well, you know, Alex, once again, I'm going to paraphrase something that one of your oldest friends, Mr. Mm-hmm. Gillette said, Mm-hmm. When they asked Penn, very, oh, Penn gave his opinion, and he would he said very early on, "I am not voting for this guy," you know, and that also compounded my feelings. It was like, and Penn is a, to me a very no nonsense guy. Yeah, uh, uh, however, he's a libertarian, and I have no respect for libertarians. I mean, politically, I like. Penn. He's a friend of mine. But... I, you know, it's a great idea, Alex. I don't want to get into this, but show me a government that's been run in that method. Show me a country that's running with that. As a libertarian government. Yeah. yeah. Show me. There yeah. aren't any. There we go. So, but the point is, is that, you know, for him, for Penn to say that also was like, whoa. <laughs> you know. Well, I can see why he doesn't like yeah. You know, um, and, and Trump's been bad for, well, it's been bad for his business. That's for damn sure. You know, he can't do his TV show. He can't do his magic show. He, he, you know, he's dead in the water. He, I'm hope he's taking a really nice vacation right now. Um, and they keep talking about, oh, how are we going to bring these? To, oh, today, by the way, big news. Broadway announced today they will not be putting on any new productions till at least after the first of the year. So there's a business that's going to be dead almost for a solid year. Movie theaters, I wouldn't count on it. You know, although the motion picture companies have found new ways of distribution, the whole thing with home distribution is working just fine for them. Very good. Yeah. Carnegie Hall. Huh? Carnegie Hall on Lincoln Center, the opera, everything that also got pushed till next year. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, well, some of them, I guess, can afford it because, like, you know, Lincoln Center is not a no, business. The, the opera is way in debt. I mean, you know, it's yeah. Like, it's you know really what? Suffering. I have no sympathy for what they were charging in the last 10 years from subscriptions. Yeah. And all the people that have donated money. Mm-hmm you know, bequeathing all these tr- trusts and stuff. I'm like, and you're still in trouble. Yeah. The only thing I'll say to that, and I agree with you, but um, we're longtime subscribers up in the cheap seats and you can get a subscription for, you know, seven operas for me and my wife costs like $500. Okay. 
that's still a hunk of money for people. It's still a hunk it's, of it's, money. It's, it's, but it's thirty-five dollars an opera. I can't go to a jazz club for that much money. I, I know, but it's you know, it's it again. Even even if I were to get an online subscription, right, for stuff that you used to be able to listen to over the air for free. You know, well, you still can. It's still an opera every week. And you know, movie theaters are are complaining. Oh well, AMC may be going out of business. <laughs> and you go goodbye. Yeah, who cares? See you later. <laughs> I can watch this at home. You know, I got a big screen and I got my surround sound and I don't have somebody kicking the back of my seat or a baby crying. You know, the only thing I need is the popcorn and I uh, got a popcorn popper and I'll, I'll make a bowl of popcorn and we'll sit there watching one of the newest movies. And by the way, I mean, if I, you know, didn't know other ways to lay my hands on those films, uh, if I wanted to pay for them on, uh, on, on, you know, any one of the number of, areas they're distributing them on like uh, uh, Amazon you can buy these movies and so on they're like at the worst they're twenty dollars for a movie okay. 1999 scoobs yeah scoobs. three kids two adults and popcorn from Costco uh, how much would that cost you if you'd taken them uh, 70 80 dollars at least and that's like we go the matinee ones we go the first ones on Saturday yeah. although 20 initially sounds horrible it's not horrible yeah, yeah, Mark. And, and, and you know, Alex, they just opened an IMAX right in my neighborhood. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my, well, no, no, it was kind of a clusterfuck because the first movie they were going to show was Spider-Man Far From Home. And actually, not only did we get an IMAX, we got a laser projected IMAX. Big deal. Well, apparently they were calibrating it and they couldn't get the system running after the calibration because... Part of the boot up sequence has to be done remotely. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a digital download, isn't it? There's no more reels of film. Okay. The right, year. right. So they ended up upgrading us to the 4D experience. If I want a motion ride like that, I'll go to Disney, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I, I was like, okay, like the movie, but the moving seats and stuff, I really could have done like that. You know, yeah. That, yeah. That was just ridiculous. But yeah, I won't even be able to enjoy my IMAX now. You know, it's like. <laughs> you know, the only time I pay would pay to go to a movie. Now we have two theaters downtown that show stuff on film. And, yeah. you know, you still, have stuff, quad, I, what? You, you still have the quad cinema, yeah, right? It's the quad, which is great. And yep. it's better than ever. They redid the whole place. It's beautiful. The sight lines are better. My and sister used to live across the street from there. So I'm very familiar. That was that Indian restaurant used to be there across the street. Oh my God! I remember. Well, Alex, do you know who used to perform his one-man show on Thirteenth Street? His brother Theodore. Exactly. <laughs> Ted Gottlieb. You know, so uh, wow. that yeah, that was uh, quite a thing. Yeah, I think Film Forum is still around. And for yeah. the other the two, Film Forum and the Quad, that show stuff on film. Uh, there's anthology film archives. Oh. Yeah, that gets exactly. I don't think forward. that's entirely true at the Film Forum. No, not entirely, but they will show things. They'll, you can read and they'll tell you whether it's... a projector there. Yeah, they'll tell you whether it's digital or whether it's 35 yeah, millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, why, for instance, should they show a movie that was made in 1931 that's in black and white and they can get themselves a great digital print of it? Why should they show the, the actual physical film? For bragging rights? You know. It depends on what condition the original reels are in you'd certainly rather see it on film if, it, if you had a comparable i would say that you probably couldn't even in most cases get a celluloid copy of those films today yeah with difficulty, with difficulty you could alex actually they can go back from uh digital back they can use the technology to kind of like reverse it and cut a print for it yeah, but, 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 but what is that? This is for bragging rights that you're running a projector. You know yeah. what I'm saying? In other words, it's not going to look better. You know. Well, listen, if you're going to be a purist, give me an arc lamp projector, okay? You know. But it's well, like of course, of course. But do you know how difficult those were? I, I, I had a guy who taught me how to run one of those projectors and had me work at his theater doing a little bit of that. And about every, every. Well, every show, you had to change the carbon stick that went in there for the lighting because as it burned, 
it went down and down and down and down. I think he used to have to change maybe once a day or something. And I remember he had a whole box of like half used carbon things so they could use the, that kind of lighting. Uh, you know, you know, but there, but there are movies like, you know, you own, I own on DVD and I'm sure everyone knows a movie like, you know, Dog Day Afternoon. And yeah. then I could see it on film at the quad and it's night and day. It's night and day difference. The, look at the blacks and grays on the digital as opposed to, you know, on film. Well, well no, the, the, there is something about digital that doesn't play right. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, and it takes a very learned eye like yours, though, to tell the difference. The and, public doesn't know the difference. Same with music, though, right? A good piece of vinyl on a good turntable sounds better than the CD. Well, no, worse than that. We've dumbed down our hearing. Yes. Because we listen to everything. Earbuds. <laughs> MP3s. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Which are nowhere, even if you're doing it at 256, which is the highest bit rate you can do for, for MP3s, it does not sound or have the same, what what are the word, what, what am I looking for? What's the word I'm looking for, Mark? Uh, the same. same uh, not range, but uh, there's, there's a kind of thing that non-digital analog recordings have that sound better than digital recordings. Ambience? Uh, it's not uh, that. No, 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 no. Uh, you know yeah, what I'm thinking of. Ambient, well, there's ambient. Uh, I, give me a second. It's, I haven't thought about this. I, since I had those uh, Mobile Fidelity Lab half-speed masters. Yeah. Yeah, how much, Alex... I had a fortune in those, and if I had a bunch of them, you probably had some too. But those were awesome. Yeah, they were awesome. But they're I, I have just and they're still around too. Um, I just have to remember. I know what you're talking about, but I haven't thought about this stuff in years. Well, what it is is digital is compressed. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have the dynamics. That's the word I was looking for. The dynamics that you have in analog. You know, uh, and, and some people are leaving will, a lot out. You're mm -hmm. leaving a lot out. Most people don't hear the difference. I mean, I have people who come over here. I'm not an audio we've been, been, we've, been doing, we've been dumbed down to accept that MP3 sound as being right. good. When I first heard it, I went, this sucks. Now I go, hey, that's great. I got it in my ears here. I mean, I'm not an audiophile. I mean, I have a decent system. But whenever anyone comes over here and I put on a record, they're like, oh, your system sounds so good. And I'm like, no, yours just sounds like shit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Alex, for a very short while, I knew uh, the engineer, one of the engineers at m &K Audio, mm -hmm. Harry Ober. And we were talking about that, trying to take digital. And he, there were a couple of components he was telling me about. I guess they were like expanders. That... Oh, who's calling me? Oh, great. Somebody's calling me and I don't, I wish I had my watch on. I could just turn the, oh, okay. I just I just look at my phone and it turns the sound of the ringing down. But there, you know, there are ways, but it's not nothing like the kerfuffle that happened when Compact Disc came out and they didn't know about remastering. They just mm -hmm. went right for mastering. <laughs> they, just, they just put a patch cord in. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, and boy, that was fun. Um, it's a little different now, but I always use this as an example. If you have the right system when uh, they remastered the Beatles and they put out flack files. Right. So I have that. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening with what headphones. Let's explain that. Flack are uncompressed audio files. Oh, okay. I mean, totally uncompressed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm listening through a software player, big Sennheiser headphones that I have. I felt like this is the closest I'm going to be in the mixing room with Sir George Martin. That's mm -hmm. how good the reproduction to my ears. Right. I, I was like blown away. I was like, wow, they finally got it where you can do this. You know, uh, it was totally amazing. You know, it's like, well, they got me the joke. That, yeah, they got me to buy the White Album again, you know, so. But did you buy this online as a file? No, no, this came in. They did a digital set and it comes in a reproduction of the Apple from the Apple logo. And the stem is a thumb drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, they didn't do that with the Mono Master set, which is a whole nother load of fun that they did. They actually. By, by the way, we'll get right back to you. You want to see the cutest kid you've ever seen in your life? There you go. There she is. With a 
Is that adorable or what? <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hi. <laughs> she found the Ritz crackers. Quick. Hi. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Mark. No, no, I'm just saying that they also came out with the Mono Masters, which were like, you know, because let's face it, Alex, back in that day, that's all I had was an AM radio mono. So listening to the Beatles on G, a certain radio station you used to work for, mm -hmm. um, that's what I was used to growing up. When the stereo stuff came out, knowing the history now, that was kind of foreign to me. Do you so remember what happened with the stereo Beatles stuff, the early stuff? But what they did is they simply, uh, they didn't record that on uh, dual tracks. They recorded like three tracks. And, and you can, to this day, if you listen to it with earphones, you've got the Beatles in one ear, you got the music in the other. Yeah. Yeah, no, they didn't care about the stereo mix. And if you, and if you want to sing along with the Beatles, just turn them off right. and sing with the music track. Yeah. But George Martin and the Beatles just would give it, give it to the engineers and say, make a stereo mix, right? They didn't care about that. They were, you know, most people were listening in mono. Right. You know, little teak wood needles on my little, yeah. <laughs> little record player. So they did a hell of a job. Oh, absolutely. With, with doing this. So, you know, once again, it's become a reference set for me. Yeah. So I'm kind of happy. It's again, it's we're living the best of times and worst of times. I think if you do it right, you really don't have to blow a lot of money to get a decent audio system. No, you really don't. I mean, it's not like, uh, yeah, but you know what you can't get? You can't get. Like, I have a lot of my stuff still on old technology. I have some of my old shows on reel to reel. You ever look to try and buy a reel to reel machine and how much they charge for them? You know, I might know. I think between you and I, Alex, I still think we know people that have reel to reels. I have a funny feeling that I might know some people that have them. Yeah. You yeah. know. But yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, old technology. Well, you know, I'm very happy though that we went to first. First, we left reel to reel. We went to cassettes. That made my life a lot easier, saving all my shows. Okay, and now I save everything digitally, and it's all on my computer. I was, actually I have copies of it on several other computers too. But basically. Um, so what it's done, it's allowed me to save and hold on to more of my history now than what I've been able to do. I mean, if you go to my uh, Facebook, my, uh, uh, what do you call it, my Gabnet uh, Roku channel, I have a whole bunch of things about me going back, okay? And as we go back further and further, there's less and less, okay? I think we finally go back to... Houston, Texas, and I've got an interview with uh, Timothy Leary, and that's it. Mm. That's pretty much it. You know, and then somebody saved, every now and then I'll, I'll find somebody who I guess was a fan or whatever who just recorded my shows every night. And I would be uh, able to, I've recovered some stuff that I never knew I remembered that I had even done. You know, yeah. I got a whole bunch of Brother Theodore interviews from somebody. Oh my God, there was a huge horde like that. I think about, I want to say 10 to 15 years ago, someone in Manhattan had a collection where he was just airdrop recording. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that he had was so rare. It was like stuff that no one even realized it existed, but he had these recordings that he made. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, there some of the stuff was they could, remaster it to make it into something that you can actually listen to. In other words, they were that good. So I've been waiting to hear, you know, it's like, where are these incredible recordings? <clears throat> so it's like, wow, the fact that there are people that were doing this. Well, I don't know. I, I, one day somebody said, oh, go here, here. I think you might be interested in this. And it was my interview with the Grateful Dead. I hadn't had that copy of that in years. Now I have a copy of it. That's great. You know, it's because there was always somebody out there as a fan who was recording stuff, and they just happened to find this in their uh, in their closet, okay? And and now I have it, you know. So uh, I do have uh, quite a bit of stuff that, uh, but up until that time, I saved it on cassettes, and but prior to that, 
I would have had to save it on reel to reel. My John and Yoko interview I have on 10 and a half inch reel to reel uh, tapes. Um, and I still have it here as well. Why is everybody trying to call me today? Albert's trying to call me now. There, I can see by looking at it, it's, it turns off the, uh, the sound. All of a sudden, I, nobody ever calls me anymore. I'm the loneliest man in town, for crying out loud. And here I'm doing this, and now they're all calling. Okay. Alex, do you have your Live 105 stuff, some of your Live 105 stuff somewhere? Uh, yeah, some of them. Yeah. I used to, I used to have some tapes. No, a lot of the Live 105 stuff. Got tons of it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I used to have some stuff on cassette, and some of the stuff, it was just like Feldman and Bubbles just cracking each other up, doing the whole cities, you know, Vanessa, I want to undress you, and those type of things. It's yeah, so well, hysterical. We, uh, I have here, uh, because I have them in my uh, storage, and they were sent to me by Damien, who mm -hmm. handling my storage back in California. I've got about a couple of hundred cassettes here my stuff in san francisco maybe maybe more than a couple hundred three or four hundred wow. uh and i i've only committed a certain amount of them i do play them here on the weekends mm -hmm. um, but i've only committed so many of them to uh files digital files because they take forever you can't you have to do them in real time you have to put the tape on mm -hmm. and then you have to play it and record it and then you turn it over and then you got to record that part and then you got to glue them together uh, there's no way that I wish there were a way that I could play these things at like quadruple speed and record them at quadruple speed or whatever, and then be able to have a, a digitized copy. But no, I've got to go and play these things and it's all real time. So it takes me forever. You need to hire an archivist. Well, I had to be, <laughs> I had to be careful about what I, what I say, but like, for instance, I have, I'm just looking here at a bunch of them here. I have, uh, Live 105 with Annie Sprinkle, uh, Boy George. Um, I have a thing from WMCA, uh, uh, one of my Paul is Dead shows. <laughs> and here's one with Brother Theodore, uh -huh. believe it or not. You know, so, uh, you know, I have, I have a lot of stuff still, you know, especially the Live 105 stuff. It's pretty much archived. Uh -huh. Yeah, because they were easier to take care of. I just took a, you know, a reel-to-reel, -reel, uh, what do you call it, copy, uh, a, uh, a cassette copy with me. Mm -hmm. And what it did, here was, here was the terrible part about it. Uh, what it did is it recorded my show, but it only recorded it every time I turned the mic on. Oh. So, so you got all the essence of the show, but you didn't get the commercials or the stuff leading up to it. Uh, and that's fine. I don't mind that, except on one particular occasion. And it was when we did a thing with Tony Bennett. Mm. He was in New York in a studio, and he did a couple of numbers for us in a studio in New York. And on that tape, you hear him start to sing, and then, whoop, that's it, because I closed my mic. I turned my oh. mic off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, things like that, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so uh, so how are you all doing? Are you, you're surviving, right, Brian? You're, you know. Yeah, and like I keep saying, the, the normalcy for me is that I'm working every day. So mm. I just, man, I have a heart for those people who stay home every single day because just the weekends are tough enough for me. And, man, five, seven days a week, man, that's unbelievable. <laughs> You've been staying indoors, Mark? Nope. And I've been fortunate because they have not closed all the trails. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes from now, 20 minutes for me is mm -hmm. literally the big Cypress Basin. Mm -hmm. And Frackahatchee and uh, Picayune strands. And I have been going out daily, hiking, mm -hmm. photographing and flying flying my new drone believe it or not um uh, i want a, i want a drone but i can't get one because they don't let us fly them in new york city yeah i noticed it was like oh my god this yeah and i'm studying i'm trying to study to get that 
you know, to get the drone license too, which is like, oh my God, what a shitstorm. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but I've been, you know, it's like, yeah, what's the worst that happened? Well, let's see, a bear scared the shit out of me uh, a couple of weeks ago, but, and I'm, I'm watching out for alligators. You know, well, you know, uh, if, if that if you're worrying about that, but not about coronavirus, you're in good shape. Absolutely. Yeah, that's no, that's why I'm, I consider myself so lucky. It's like, yeah, uh, that's amazing. That's great. I think but, Big, Cy Big Cypress, home of the most legendary fish concert ever. Yeah, I've <laughs> that, and it was made famous by an H.P. Lovecraft short story huh. from back in the day. You know, so it's like, oh, fish played an 11-hour set on New Year's Eve. Yeah, wow. and, and it's like when you go to where they did that, it's like how it's like wow, you know, I gotta give them credit that was staying power, man, you yeah. know. Yeah. But the uh, yeah, it's nice, but now the heat this, this this is what's getting me finally the heat down here. If I'm I gotta get out early, and I can tell you by nine o'clock, I'm drenched. I mean, I'm like no matter how many bottles of water I keep with me or I have to be done. It, it, it's, it's, I'm like, Oh my God, you know, even the animals are like seeking. Shade. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know, but Steve, you're staying indoors, right? You're down in Union Basically, Square. I mean, I, you know, I want to get a little fresh air, but you know, as I said, every time I put on my mask, I step outside, I'm like, okay, where can I go? It's so fucking hot. Well, I it's like I know I, I could go outside, but where can I go? But then I got, then I say to myself, but I got to get outside because That's I think that exactly. a lot of the things that I'm feeling sick wise, sickness wise, yeah, no, exactly, being lightheaded all the time and things like that, it's because right. I've just been in here too long. You know, I have a high school friend who lives in the upper Broadway. We'll leave it at that. I have an idea of where she lives, but she's become the caretaker for her mom and her. I'll say this, I don't want to, you know, if I tell her name by accident, both mom and daughter work in the entertainment field. Mm -hmm. and, but her mom has issues and she's been dealing with that. And I'm like, you get the platinum star, you know, you, know, you go above and beyond. And it's tough. I mean, it, it's really tough. She puts on a mask, she goes out, does the shopping and she has her own thing. She, you know, she does her stuff and she takes care of her mom, but she's still stuck like you, Steve, and you, yeah. Brian, and you, Alex, still stuck in a New York City apartment. Well, Brian is in California. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're in Cal. Where in Cali are you? San Jose, Almeda Valley. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I got yeah, totally. Yeah, I know yeah, she where can't. You she can't. She can't walk out and do anything like you know. Try to at least get some. You know, she's stuck still at home. Yeah, it's bad. You know, if you take care of your parents or something, you want some outlet at least to hang out with your friends for a little bit, get some normalcy. And if she can't do that, that's really hard on her. Well, luckily, there are other high school friends that still love, live in the city. So I'm hoping, mm. you know, it's like, it's, <laughs> I want to come up there. And Alex, I was supposed to come up there to visit in May. Mm -hmm. By the way, I was going to say, I was going to say, well, I'm here in Bay Ridge for a week, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, so what's up? You know, well, that's not going to happen. No, it's not happening. You know, so to begin with, you're from Florida, so you have to quarantine yourself for two weeks. Yeah, but you know what scared? You know what? What really scared me? So I happened to look up while hiking, and I'm near. I'm I'm in an area that's on the approach to Fort Myers International. It is an yeah. international airport. Yeah, and I got my zoom lens, and it's I can tell it's a friggin' jumbo jet. It's from Ber it's Air Berlin, and I'm like, wait a minute, there are people yeah. coming in from Europe, really? Why? I I, I was yeah. like, this is nuts. It's like, why are they well, coming? certain countries now? The European Union is thinking of not letting Americans in. <laughs> I'm sure they wanted to do that to us a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, because we're exceptionally infected. Mexico is using the border wall to keep us out. <laughs> how can, how can they possibly enforce this quarantine? So if you came from Florida and you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days, how do they think you do that? They're kind of asking you to do it on the honor system, right. you know, because they know they can't either. The only thing they can do is if, for instance, let's say Mark drove up here and he's got a Florida driver's, a Florida's plate, they could stop him 
and say, how long have you been here? You know, and blah, 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 blah. blah. You realize you have to quarantine yourself. You know, that's about the most they can do. You can just say, I've been here for a month. You know, maybe they could do something. People get off the plane from Florida. I guess they could they could do that too. But all they can do is suggest to people that they quarantine themselves. Um, but, you know, I mean, um, and I'm sure Mark is a nice guy and he's not infected, but nevertheless, you know, he's coming from an area. You know, I mean, we had enough problem with people coming from Europe that gave us the disease here in the first place. Um, that... And we've done a really hard job of getting 800 a day dead, okay? 800 a day dead down to, what was it yesterday, eight the day before, five, okay? We work really hard at that. We don't need somebody to come in and infect us again. You know, that's our big fear now. And I even noticed that Boston's numbers are dropping finally, you know, and that was, I'm, I was like monitoring New York and Boston. And Boston, there's this group of ER doctors that have been putting together like an electronic newsletter. Mm -hmm. A lot of it goes over my head. I have to like look up terms and, you know, thank God for Google, you know. Mm -hmm. But these guys are really on top of stuff that I wouldn't, you know, because they're, they're doctors, you know, they know stuff. Right. And it's so interesting to see what's, you know, what they're trying, what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. they're researching and it's open information they're not hiding it they want to share it with everyone you know right so i'm I'm happy to see that because for a while the numbers were in boston were like oh my god this is not good you know but now they're actually really coming down yeah well i mean what we did here in new york state uh, is amazing it is just nothing short of amazing, and we don't want to see it screwed up by a bunch of infected people coming into the state now. That's our biggest fear. Yeah. And the kids downtown, the mayor, the governor brought this up today that they're they we may may not go to phase three until they clean up their act, you know. Uh, but he cited them in particular. Hey, listen, we kind of run out of time. I just want to do a short one, and an hour I figure is short. Or maybe it's not, actually. It's about two-thirds of my normal show. But this is with a bunch of people I really enjoyed being with today. That's what I like about doing these things. Yeah, I love doing these things on a Monday occasionally because I get a bunch of people who just, it's very civil, very simple, you know, easy peasy, nice conversation among friends. But anyway, I want to thank you all for uh, for, for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for doing this. Bye. See you guys. Uh, okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Stay safe. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out now how to, well, anyway, goodbye to all of you. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. watching night. this recording. And now let me uh, stop the uh, record to the computer. And then I'm going to say goodbye to the rest of you and say thank you so much for joining me and my group of people here. It's been, uh, it's been really terrific. And uh, everybody. Stay safe, and if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? It, you know I always say that.